what I'm looking for is something that well I'm looking for ways to improve the speed of making bullets without losing any accuracy when I say accuracy I'm talking about accuracy in the power charge Okay, the scale says it's 9.5. Let's see. Put it on the other one. And let's move over to it. Well, it's still over 9.6. If you'll notice, I've got beam. It's set on 9.6. Let me let me just stand this up straight. It it hits on this one center point. It, it doesn't change the scale in any way, but it does uh, just to help you see. And I've got that beam set on 9.6, and I've settled the uh, weights into the groove to make sure they're not you know off or sloppy or any of that. So based on that. We're still at 9.6. The digital scale says it's 9.5. And I have I bumped the instrument down, or the dispenser weight setting down a tenth of a grain. Just to see if I can, uh, what I'm shooting for is an average. If I can do an average, it works good. One bullet that I make the uh, range ammo. I've got it derated about 5% on the speed of what the same comparable bullet would be if it had an expensive bullet in it. And that's really the only difference in my range ammo and the other bullets is I use a cheaper bullet with the same weight, but uh, just a cheaper bullet. But I still want the ballistics to be very similar so that when you're practicing at the range, you won't uh, be shooting one type of bullet with a one performance range and then you get used to that and then you put you some different bullets in there and you know it's going to throw you off throw you off a little bit well looking at the uh, electronic scale it's floating all around let's see if it'll stabilize on uh, I've got like I say I've got the setting on 9.5 now that could be caused by air currents even though I turned the uh, vents off in this room on the air conditioner so that and I don't really actually feel any currents, but it could be one float around somewhere. Okay, let's see. We'll put that on the beam. Looks like it did come down a little bit. So that's dead on 9.6, or nearly dead on it. Okay. Go back. We're going to do this over and over. Uh, I've been told that this thing is supposed to be learning the, the uh, curve, but the thing is, I think the limiting factor here is really the scale. If the scale were had a, a second digit to the right of the decimal, it would uh, it'd give you a way to see how where you were in between those numbers. Because 9.55 compared to 9.5 sounds like a small amount, but I mean I can be that accurate the beam scale I can hit within I would say it's more like a uh, 0.025 or better to the target every time okay according to this it weighs 9.6 but according to this It weighs 9.5, or maybe just slightly lower than 9.5. Let me bump the hopper. Let me bump the tray one time and see if it comes back to where it was. Yeah, see that scale is. One thing about a scale is driven by gravity. It mostly is going to have to be the same. I mean, there's a friction point in the hinge. I'm mean, not the hinge. I guess they call it the fulcrum, but 
There's a slight friction point there, but I put WD-40 on mine. I want it to be free, free and easy, and it's a very small contact point. Like I say, I've played with this scale so much. I've had it. I've had it for 28 years now. Never let me down. I'm going to dispense and love them. Um, like I say, my point here only being that I'm trying to illustrate the variability between these devices and the reason why I hand weigh the powder charges on my premium ammo. And I see that scale right there showing it at 9.7. No, it's back 9.6. So it floats around, and, that, and it could be air currents. And, I'm, and those air currents, if they're messing with the scale while you're dispensing, then that's another point where variability comes in. So anyway, it said it was 9.7, but it, it bumped 9.6 a couple of times. Let me see what it does. <clears throat> I'd say it's closer to 9.8. See, it's on 9.8. And that's just uh, that's just a, just a thing, the problem you're dealing with, and that's why I'm trying to show the difference. I mean, I have to, I have to charge more money for those bullets, and the reason I do is because it takes a lot of time. It's tedious. I don't know how many if you guys have tried to uh, weigh out a thousand rounds of ammo by by hand. But uh, let me tell you right now, it can become tedious. And when it does, you have to take breaks because otherwise your accuracy, like I was saying earlier, that beam scale is only as accurate as the operator. Okay. Just the dispense is complete. It says we're doing well. It's moving around. Let's see, well, it's going. Up and down. I'm not so much worried about the only reason I, I care what that electronic scale is saying is because that's what the dispenser is looking at to know when to stop the dispenser. So right now, I had that one set on the same setting 9.5. I was getting 9.7, 9.6, and all kinds of stuff. And I've got uh, the beam is still set on 9.6 though and I've got a low pointer it's uh, roughly a half of one of those not quite a half of one of those increments off so it's low it's 9.5 somewhere between 9.5 and 9.6 somewhere around you know I, it's hard to split that even on that beam scale but you can you can see how where the corner is at on the scale. The dispenser seems like the trick of the, the little powder on the pan where the pan pad is. There'll be some grains of powder on there that need to be well not granules of powder that would need to be cleaned off every time. Let's see if there's a, a scale swinging all over the place right now. I can make it stabilize or not, I don't know. Well, I can't make it do it, but let me see if it will do it. Seems to be stable. Well, I say the dispenser will wait on the scale to become stable. with a 9.5 set point on the dispenser. Scale showing 9.4 right now. It did come up to 